Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey is into my world, the world of seniors and active living. And I am a senior. <laughs> so today we are visiting with the lovely lady. Thank you. <laughs> Meryl O'Neill. Thank you. And Meryl is the director of programs for the Waikiki Community Center. And we are talking about active aging. See, I told you we are in the world. My journey. And my journey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? We have so many terms, words, for seniors and old folks and all kind of things. What, what is it we're talking about? We're talking about um, individuals, adults, mature adults that are older. I think that's the, the most neutral way of saying it. Uh, seniors conjures, you know, age in, a, in kind of a negative way. It is. Yeah. And what we've discovered in working with um, our older, mature adults is that um, we're kind of stigmatized by that thing called age. So it, age yes. is kind of a bad word. It has been because people think when you talk about aging and getting old, that you have to have arthritis and you've got to have aches and pains and you don't remember anything and it's like people are scared to death of getting old. They are. They They're are. Really and I, I was uh, actually pretty surprised to find some of the uh, my daughter's peers that are really terrified about aging. You know, so it really has kind of a boogeyman uh, image. Uh, I remember when uh, my mother passed away when she was 101, and she always said to me, never, ever tell people your age, no matter how much they persist, to find out how old you are. And I said, why is that? She says, because as soon as you tell them your age, they assume certain things about you. And today, that's called ageism. Yes. It's called ageism. And one of the biggest uh, hurdles as an older, mature uh, adult that we have to, that we encounter, is that people assume uh, certain things about how you're going to be, whether you're able to navigate on your own, even if you've been doing it for 60, 70, yes. or 80 years. <laughs> it just baffles me. My husband's oldest son just turned 65, so we both wrote to him to welcome him in to the Legion. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> you know, so that it was light and fun and not scary, the boogeyman and all that kind of stuff. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. So it's really, um, you know, an accomplishment to have been able to survive and navigate the journey in a way that uh, you are still together, <laughs> yes. you know, and still able. And what often happens as well as we uh, mature and get older is that people see retirement as a time to let go. And, uh, and, and that's, that's not where even it is. That word retirement, and most people, when they were, had labor jobs, when people worked yes. their butts off, retirement was a time to relax. Yes. But now, now what are you going to do exactly. when you retire? Now exactly. What? Just the average American that retires at, say, 65 um, have, has another 20 or 30 years of, of a really good, productive life. life. And for the most part, with the uh, improvements in medicine and pharmaceuticals, uh, we can continue to live a very productive life now whether people choose to or not, That's the biggie. or plan to or not, is another question. And that, that is currently you know, one of the hurdles. You look so forward to that time of relaxation that you fail to think about, oh my goodness, I have 20 or 30 years. And what am I going to do with it? And, and, and Hawaii, of course, and, and you know, our population of Gray hair is growing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. In fact, Hawaii um, is the fastest growing 
um, gray hairs in the 50, in the 50 states. Well, we course. surpass all other states in that, that percentage of the population. I would think it used to be Florida when everybody went because it's warm. Exactly. And now that's the weather makes it uh, easy to navigate. Right. You don't have to shovel snow and you don't have to buy winter coats and do all of those things. Or deal with hurricanes. Or hurricanes. <laughs> At the level that they've been getting in, oh, uh, in yes. that part of the country. Yeah, exactly. And so, so um, and even though our cost of living is enormous, <laughs> um, it is still a comfortable way to live. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, 50 years ago, the state of Hawaii did some really early planning and initiated the Commission on Aging, which is now the Executive Office of Aging. And what they estimated was this population growth. They estimated between 1980 and 2035 that the population of Hawaii would grow by 65%. Now, when they looked at the population numbers for 65 and older, that growth rate was at 310%. So from 1980 to, 19, uh, to 2035, the anticipated or estimated growth rate is at 310%. And for those over 85, that, that percentage estimate is 1,158%. Oh, my. Right. People are just living longer. They're living longer. And the other thing that you mentioned about people moving, the in-migration of our mainlanders retiring here yes. in Hawaii has added to that, plus the lower mortality rate, plus the fact that there are uh, most ethnic groups are not uh, bearing children. Very few of them. So mm -hmm. the, and then with... Um, with the improvements in medicine and pharmaceuticals, all of that have added to this enormous, almost unmanageable population growth. It is, it seems that way anyway, because when you look at the, just the numbers, right, or trying to drive on the highway. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, my, yes. oh my, yes. yes, yes, yes. So it's not so much the, um, those under 65 that are growing, but that population is in the 65 and over. And so we then look at you know, challenges and opportunities. Back then when the commission was formed, which was 55 decades ago, you know, talk about future planning, um, the whole focus on aging was about sick care. Right. And the reality is, is that there's not enough money to build the infrastructure to care for people properly if they're in the paradigm of being sick. So what has happened, uh, I think it was 2002, uh, the United Nations actually proclaimed uh, a new alternative to aging called active aging. And we recently at the Waikiki Community Center have grabbed the reins of that particular horse and saying, you know, there are too many uh, people that are 65 and older that still remain active, are still uh, active in their community, um, have a lot to give, not only to their families. And on the other side, the issue is, but they're not respected. Well, and you know, um, it used to be mandatory 65 retirement age, and now people are not retiring at 65. No. They stay working until... They just don't want to do it anymore. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, with the extra 20 or 30 years, I don't know if the 401 case will be able to sustain people for that length of time. Because originally, when 401 Ks were put together, they were put together for a, short, a shorter retirement than 20 or 30 years. So it's so time. I have a slide on, uh, on active aging there and what the, what the purpose of active aging is. What we're attempting to do in all the programs that we support is extending our health span to equal our lifespan. So 
basically live long, die yeah. short. Yes. So that's the point of active aging. Um, there's another slide that addresses the, the 10 areas of, uh, of focus for, you know, being successful in active aging. And so one of them, of course, is to determine your life purpose. And I think, Marsha, you've been really successful in being able to do that from a very young age. Well, you and see, let me tell you about this. Uh, being my size, I, well, as a child, I used to love to go to the waterfront and see the tugboats pushing the big. And I decided I was a tug because I was smaller than anybody. And I wanted to be, I thought I was six feet tall, but I'm a tug. But I could push the big one. <laughs> so I grew up thinking, I'm a tug. I'm a tugboat. <laughs> yeah. And I can do this. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're definitely exemplary. I, yeah. I, I honor you for that. I honor you for that. And I appreciate the fact that you are continue, you continue to stay deep into, you know, the effectiveness and the liveliness of our community. And I think that, um, you're not an exception. No. There are a, a lot, lot of people. And a lot of people at the same time also need to be awakened to the fact that they can kind of pursue their passion. Because after all, you know, you have a retirement income. You're able to do the things you want to do. So why not get passionate and hustle? Because, you well, know. Even when I didn't have the income, I had the passion. I know. I know. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, some people are just self-generating, you yeah. know, without well, having to really think about it. When, um, but that is an it. The so many people outlive their finances. Yes, and that is an issue. So when you look at the uh, the facets to active aging on that chart, one of the areas is financial. It's physical, medical, nutritional, financial. Consumer protection, which is a big issue these days with people calling on the phone or sending you oh. email and saying, you know, my grand, your grandchild is in prison yes. and we need that's, the bail, yes. you know, that stuff. So consumer protection, mental issues, you know, the functioning of the brain, the cognitive ability and how to maintain those social issues. I recently found out that... Um, uh, social isolation, a person who is socially isolated, the effects of that isolation is equal to an individual smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Really? Yeah, really. Well, I'm, I've, I don't know this for sure, but I think that let's assume you're 65 and you move away from Kansas and you move to Hawaii, but your children and grandchildren are still there. Now you are alone. Right. So what would that do? And unless, of course, you just get out and become a part of the community. <laughs> right, right. But you are still alone. Yes. What does that do to you? Well, that's social isolation. You know, and we are social beings, so we all need to have connections. Yes. Some of us have the ability to do that naturally. Others of us, not so much. So the Waikiki Community Center, as an example, um, is that place where people can come to exercise, socialize, play games, uh, you know, do, do things, get involved in volunteer activities. And most recently, we've been um, doing civic engagement activities where we've audited the condition of our streets so that they're walkable we have done pedestrian safety. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we will find out what else you can do at the community center. Right. Okay, Wonderful. we'll be right back. Thank you. Aloha, everyone. I'm Christine Linders, and this is Think Tech Hawaii. My show is Movement Matters. And this is a show brought to you to talk about how to get rid of things like your low back pain, scoliosis, TMJ dysfunction, ankle sprains, pretty much anything that you can do with your body or hurt your body, I am here to bring to you the cutting edge strategies that you can do right now easily on your own to help get out of pain and get back to doing what you love. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Tune in Tuesdays at 11 a.m. every other week.
for Movement Matters. Aloha. Aloha and welcome. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Uh, every other Monday at one o'clock, I am here on deck with various guests talking about different topics of the world and the ocean and international law, different areas where we all have seen and want to travel to and learn about. Please join me for my next Law Across the Sea program. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Marcia, and we're back. And we are navigating the journey into being a senior, into active aging. I love that. Active aging. Active aging. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Me and too. we're talking with Meryl O'Neill, who is the director of programs at the Waikiki Community Center. And if you haven't been there, you really must go. Doesn't cost you anything. In you can find right. parking, it's free. <laughs> yes, you can find parking. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, you know, Waikiki can be, on the, on the street parking can be right. a bear. Right. But, now. That's how we're an oasis. We have parking. And speaking of which, the Waikiki, I was there one day, the Waikiki Community Center is my memory of old Hawaii. And this it particular is. day, there were, ukulele lessons. Yes. And the breeze was blowing through the trade winds and it was like it took me way back. Yes. To yes. be in this location cuz they've been there for how long? 40. Well, we've been uh incorporated for 41 years, but yes. prior to that, we actually took over the St. Augustine's Elementary School buildings. So we're on the site of where the school used to be. Yes. Yes. So I have no idea when when that uh, is, you know, when yeah, they originated. It, like I said, it, that feeling. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if you haven't been there, I suggest you do, even if it's just for that little bit uh, of old Hawaii that's still there. That part that, oh, well, I guess if you knew, you don't know that. But that, that stirs a... Yes, Something yes, inside. yes. When Waikiki was magic. It's still magic. Before all of the concrete. Yes, before <laughs> all of the concrete. Yes. Well, actually, the community center sits on the, um, the property of Queen Liliu Kalani. Mm -hmm. And what is Paul Kalani right. Avenue was a stream. Mm -hmm. You know, because Alawai Canal wasn't, wasn't there, there, right? Yes. So the stream flowed on the street, and people remember remember that kind of, you know, old time, very comfortable, uh, easygoing kind of experience, which is probably what you experienced. I was feel, uh, but I, it was a feeling. Yes. As I'm hearing the ukulele, because the, yes, they're doing yes. lessons, and I was outside with you, and the it just trade winds, right? it was like, oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you caught that. Because it is, you, it's, it's subtle unless you can recall the memory. And I try to let people know that we are on very special ground. We've been very fortunate to uh, be endowed that particular you know, piece of property. It is. Now, so tell me about this um, aging as an asset. Oh, I love that. Well, you know, um, we talk about 20 or 30 years of not having to report to a job. Right? And all of a sudden you find yourself with so much time. Well, what do you do with that time? So it's a time when, and we talk about this when we talk about uh, civic engagement as an example, it's a time when you can follow your legislators on issues that really matter to you. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're proposing for this uh, next session is the requirement and enforcement of emergency plans for condominiums and apartments. Now, currently, there's a, a fire regulation for that, but there is not, nothing for disaster preparedness. And the requirement requires that people actually plan for drills like we used to in school. Right. 
drills twice a year. Now, how much of a difference would that make to a building community, as an example, in terms of peace of mind? You know, so there's things like that that people can promote. Uh, sidewalk and street walking safety is another big issue in Waikiki that we have begun to take the initiative for. And we need people to show up, volunteer, talk about it, and bring it to their local legislators because um, street safety is so important for all of us, no matter whether you're keiki or kupuna. Well, can I make a suggestion? Sure. You need to do it now. You don't wait until the legislature convenes in January. Right. You need to do to it now. Talk to them now because yes. this is when bills are formed. Right. Right. And we're not in, in January, right. but now. Right. We're actually in discussion with our senator and, um, and of course, our uh, councilman. So it's a time when people have the opportunity to really take on a passion. Yes. You know, it's also a time when people want to continue to work, but maybe they don't want to do as serious a job as they did. No. But there are many, many businesses that are looking for individuals that, one, have a work ethic, two, are dependable. And basically, the market right now is wide open for employment. Our challenge in this area, of course, is ageism. And so we have a program at the center where um, we will interview, prepare, and begin to place individuals in different kinds of positions. Uh, and that's relatively new. That is. You know, but people need, there are people that are not as fully funded as others and want to continue to be able to choose the activities you know, that they want to get involved with. And sometimes that might be to go on an outing or to go out to have lunch or dinner without feeling like you're pressured uh, because you don't have the funds for it. So uh, let's, let's talk about um, your upcoming fair, okay. your event. I love the way you spell fair. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I often get, you know, um, comments about that and the whole purpose of the fair is one because it's for seniors and two because people ask questions is that spelled correctly that auto on my computer every time i type it the auto correct would come back and like exactly yes. exactly but it's kind of a <laughs> reminder a reminder we'll spell it to so people. people will understand what we're talking about. Exactly. It's spelled F A I R E, which is the old English style oh, yes. of, of uh, spelling. There. So you have, we have a poster. Yes, that, we do. There it is. There it is. Oh, but it's spelled without the E. Oh, a typo that we didn't catch. See, yes. It see, is F A I R E. If see you, your autocorrect. Yeah. If you go, if you go to the uh, somebody autocorrected. So if you go to the other, uh, the other uh, graphic. I don't know if you can find it, um, or if you deleted it. It does there. spell. Let's yeah, see. There yes, it is. There, there it is. is. There yeah. it is. But basically, what we're offering at this senior wellness fair, it's called refresh, rejuvenate, and reset, because it's an opportunity for you to refresh what you're doing get rejuvenated and stimulated by the opportunities and resources that are there, and then reset and start the year. Now, we plan it for October because it's Medicare renewal time. Yes. And uh, we have all the um, Medicare program uh, representatives there to answer any question that you might have or for you to consider switching over from one to another. It's kind of complicated because of A, B, C, D and all the supplements. So it's a good time to kind of get grounded. It is. And we will be there. And you look at the banner. It says, what does the banner say? <laughs> <laughs> Navigating the journey. Right. So come exactly. talk to me and visit with me and take the time to visit with all of the people that are there. Right. And we don't bite. <laughs> and we don't sell. Yeah, oh we yeah, don't nothing's, sell. Nothing's so you sale. can follow up. You can meet the people on a one-to-one -one basis, get them to know them by their first name, pick up the phone and call them. And we have some really unusual resources from uh, Compassion and Choices, 
We have the, uh, the uh, medical marijuana dispensary represented there, where you could ask all the questions you wanted, want to ask without being embarrassed about asking, because it's very new to people, uh, some of these services. Other services include, you know, the employment and the, you know, senior uh, referral services that are at the Waikiki Community Center. Please join us. It's free. Yes. And you don't. I don't, are, you, are there any items that are for sale? No, we're not. We don't allow any kind of selling no, whatsoever. No selling no, at all. No. Yeah. And so, but people can I give away samples if they have. Absolutely, we're encouraging people to do that. Um, I don't have any. I we, just want to hear it. At, at Think Tank, don't have any samples. Well, okay. So <laughs> I just want to um, also mention that we have benefited tremendously this year by the sponsorship of Hawaii USA. And they will come and actually do financial planning, just plain old budgeting, whatever you need uh, to inquire about how to manage your finances. So thank you, Hawaii USA. Well, now what I want you to do is to look in this camera and tell us exactly about the fair, the time, the place, and everything. Right there. Okay. The Refresh, Rejuvenate, and Reset Senior Wellness Fair is uh, planned for Tuesday, October the 8th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, at the Waikiki Community Center. The address is 310 Paukalani Avenue. We're in the heart of Waikiki, two blocks ever or west of uh, the zoo. You come, you drive on from Kapahulu to uh, Kuhio, take the first right, which is Paukalani. We're about three quarters way down the street. Uh, take a left and park. We ask people to please carpool. We have overflow parking at Jefferson Elementary on Wainani Way. Very good. And the time? The time is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please and join us. Yeah, please yep. join us and ha let's have fun. Right. And there'll be about 30 different kinds of resources to help you to actively age, to address any kind of issue that you might have. Uh, we, you're welcome to come. Thank you. Well, thank you. And it's been a real pleasure always spending always. this time thank with you. you. And we'll see you on the 8th. That's correct. That's at Tuesday. At the Waikiki Community Center. Aloha, and I'll see you next time.